Okay. That's Jill. She's in the other room. She just logged in to test and raised her hand. You know what, Steve, if this is the extent of the of the staff team, uh, you can go ahead and go through the roll call or go through the attend uh, the uh, staff side attendance. Okay, I can do that. Hello, everyone, and uh, 
Uh, welcome to the tobacco retail license meeting. We're going to give everybody just a, a few more moments to join up before we, we start the meeting. So, and just for a few more minutes. Well, good evening, everyone. And again, welcome to the tobacco retail license meeting. Uh, panel members and members of the public, I uh, want to thank you for joining us today for this tobacco retail license meeting via Zoom. Uh, please be aware that this meeting is being recorded. Uh, my name is Steve Stephen Brown. I'm the Administrative Secretary for the City of Santa Rosa's Communications and Intergovernmental Relations Department, and I'll be your Zoom host for the evening. Uh, for tonight's meeting, we have representatives from both the City of Santa Rosa and the County of Sonoma. To facilitate the most informative meeting we can provide, please be aware of the following protocols. As members of the public join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee, and your microphone and camera will be muted. Only today's presenters will be viewed during the meeting. The City of Santa Rosa and Sonoma County are committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. And if necessary, we will also immedi immediately end the meeting. Again, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, this meeting will begin with Jason Nutt um, providing a general overview and information regarding the tobacco retail license. Uh, afterward, Jason will open up the meeting for public questions and comments. Once we get underway with the question period, anyone risk, uh, wishing to ask a question or uh, make a comment can do so by raising their hand in Zoom. For individuals participating in this meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. I will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hand raised and will unmute your microphone so you may ask your question. Uh, once you've raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, your hand will be lowered and your microphone muted so our panelists can respond to your questions. So again, thank you for joining us this evening. I'm going to uh, go ahead and turn this over to the Assistant City Manager, uh, Jason Nutt. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, welcome. Uh, we're happy to have this opportunity to have a, a dialogue and conversation about uh, tobacco retail license that the city is going to be proposing to the city council this upcoming Tuesday, that's May 21st. Um, our tobacco retail ordinance is, is, um, is gonna be going as a first read, which, which is this is gonna be council's first opportunity to really get to understand the, the policy document that we're attempting to incorporate into our city code. Um, to give you a little bit of background, um, well, first and foremost, I'm going to share my screen really quick. I'm going to show you um, the anticipated agenda for today, and, and, and what it really does show is it's going to show the... What this shows is the predominant areas of discussion that will be going through each of these bullet points relates to a particular chapter or code section uh, within the ordinance that we're uh, hoping to have council provide us feedback on. Um, before we get in front of council, we really want to hear uh, concerns and comments and, and productive dialogue with the retailing community within 
the city so that we can have uh, enough information to provide council with um, both the proposed ordinance, but also potential alternative language they may want to consider in response to some of the feedback that we're hearing from, uh, from the retail community. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing at this point, and we can come back to this as we work our way through, but I want to start with just describing the purpose. The reason we're uh, even undertaking this is um, during council goal setting uh, back in um, February of 2023, uh, city council members heard a request from community members to establish a tobacco retail license similar to one that was uh, recently uh, approved back in 2022 by the city of Petaluma. Uh, the task fell to me to undertake, and over the course of the last year, uh, I've been working with team members both at the city and at the county to better understand what a tobacco retail license is, what components need to be incorporated, how those components may or may not impact our community, both for the positive and the negative, uh, and then to uh, work on developing language that we might be able to incorporate into an ordinance that would come forward uh, to the county or to the city's city council. Um, in November of last year, we hosted a study session. Uh, a study session just meant we threw ideas on the table in front of the council and we were there to get feedback from them that helped us define the boundaries of what they wanted to see in a proposed tobacco retail license ordinance. And what they came back with was a series of protocols around um, transfers, uh, how we would buffer around youth oriented areas, what would occur with flavored uh, products or, or electronic smoking devices uh, and packaging. Um, and uh, ultimately, what we heard was to develop a program that really was very similar to, to the city of Petaluma's ordinance. And I know many of you are aware of uh, Petaluma's ordinance, as well as Windsor, Sebastopol, Sonoma, and now Sonoma County's ordinance. Um, our ordinance would not be too dissimilar. In fact, it would be very much in alignment. Uh, this is the second of two meetings that we're hosting to have this dialogue. Uh, we had one yesterday afternoon uh, that was in person uh, over at the utility field office off of Stony Point Road. Uh, and we had pretty good attendance. We had 12 retailers in the room uh, and we had one uh, retail customer in the room. And uh, I thought the dialogue was was good. I thought we received some great feedback and information, uh, and we're hoping to continue that discussion and dialogue uh, this evening as well. The primary focus that council directed us to look at in the study session back in November was really focused on reducing the access and use of uh, of smoking devices or cigar or tobacco products. Uh, by youth. That's, that's the primary angle on this. And as we've been working through a number of different angles uh, and, and code language, um, what we found is, is it's very difficult to only focus in on a youth, on a youth pro uh, focused product. Uh, and that those regulations and rules actually do spill over into the general populace when it comes to uh, establishing uh, a retail license for tobacco sales. Um, and so with that though, we've made an attempt to, we've made an attempt to at least understand and solicit feedback on how we can keep from going too far. Um, again, the focus is on youth use and sales, not necessarily on the entire populace. Uh, I understand that some of the proposals that we have in place uh, at council's direction may seem uh, a little more uh, broad brushed than just toward the youth. Uh, and we wanna hear your feedback on that. And so I'm gonna work my way through each of those individualized um, key discussions, discussion areas that, we, that I showed on the screen here, uh, which are all incorporated into the draft for, uh, or the proposed ordinance. So the first, is to talk about how do transfers work? Because I think that's one of the areas that people have great concern. Um, 
what we're looking at doing in establishing uh, or issuing new licenses and how transfers might allow with those licenses, uh, we are grandfathering in the existing number of tobacco retailers within the city limits today. Based on data that we received from the state and county, we have 118 retailers currently active within the city limits. Uh, and our intent is to cap the number of licenses that can be issued for tobacco sales at 118, allowing each of the existing retailers to continue to stay in business and operate uh, in their current location. Um, the idea of being able to operate in your current location is the grandfathering clause for, uh, for some of the proximity-oriented uh, rules that are going to be incorporated into the uh, ordinance, such as a buffer between the retailer and a youth-oriented area. But, and I'll get into that here in just a moment. For existing retailers, um, paying an annual fee to be able to provide this or to be able to uh, pay for the license itself, that license would allow us to create an evenly matched playing field for all tobacco retailers. All retailers would be held to the same standard and would be, uh, would be uh, evaluated in a similar way. Uh, one of the pieces of feedback that we heard last night was that the interjurisdictional working and how, would it, how does a tobacco retail license that in the unincorporated area match up with the city versus our partners in Sebastopol or, or Sonoma or in Rona Park? And the information that we have to date is that all but Rona Park have very similar uh, ordinances and therefore the distribution or the similarities of how those tobacco retailers are evaluated uh, is, is almost identical. Uh, and therefore there's a very even playing field between jurisdictions and jurisdictional boundaries. From the standpoint of if you wish to sell a business, um, in Santa Rosa, we will be allowing transfers. And if that transfer occurs within the corporate hands, um, then there wouldn't be any change in the grandfathering clause associated with that license. If the transfer or sale occurs at an arm's length type of uh, transaction to a new retailer, it would be the new retailer's responsibility to then conform to all code sections, which would then include uh, the youth-oriented buffer. Um, and that in and of itself could restrict a retailer from, from selling tobacco in the future if they're within one of those boundaries. Now, from a youth-oriented, well, let me, let me stop. Uh, well, from a youth-oriented buffer perspective, um, Council had requested that we look at a thousand feet from the boundary of all school properties and park and recreational areas. Um, as we did the research on that, a couple of things came uh, to light uh, and we are considering and proposing a 600 foot buffer instead. Uh, the decision to propose that to council uh, is that it aligns with the cannabis ordinances buffer uh, for cannabis dis dispensaries. They have an identical buffer program um, and this would mirror uh, that program with the same uh, buffer distance. Um, it also reduces substantially the number of potential non-conforming businesses. Uh, it, cuts the, uh, it cuts the number of non-conforming by about uh, 25 to 30 percent, which I feel is fairly significant. Um, and it sets us up for a level of a success moving forward, uh, given the corridors and the areas that would remain unencumbered uh, into the future uh, should a, uh, a new retailer uh, want to establish at another location. One of the other programs that we're looking at is, is, further, is further stating the statewide flavor ban or the prohibition of selling flavored products. 
Um, the purpose of incorporating that into our ordinance is it provides the city the opportunity to address the uh, those retailers who have chosen to try and sell um, under the counter or, or in a back room. Um, it gives us a, a specific local ability to penalize or to uh, establish a violation for those particular retailers. Again, from our perspective, our, our hope is to level the playing field. Let's, let's not allow bad actors to continue to be bad actors in that sense. Uh, and it is unfortunate sometimes that the establishment of rules and regulations is for the minority, not the majority uh, of, of folks participating in something. Uh, and so uh, it's, this is really not going to change anyone's um, current requirements. It's just going to give the city a local authority to take action uh, as opposed to waiting for state to take action. Another component would, is the establishment of a minimum pack size and minimum price. Uh, minimum price, as you've seen in many of the other jurisdictions, uh, is for a pack of cigarettes, uh, a pack of 20, uh, and establishing a minimum price. Um, we are proposing a $10 minimum. I know that some other jurisdictions adjacent to us have a slightly lower minimum, but we've been told recently that in most instances, they are all going to be aligning around that $10 mark here soon. Um, from a minimum pack price or minimum pack size, uh, that really relates to the little cigars, um, like the Swishers. Uh, the intent there, as you've seen in other jurisdictions as well, is to, is to limit the pack size to five or more. Um, and again, the general concept with both of those items, um, while it does impact individuals who are of lower income that are adults, um, but the real purpose of this is to address the potential for youth to uh, come into an establishment and be served, uh, the likelihood that, the, that they have a lesser amount of funds in their pocket is greater, uh, and so creating a greater challenge for them to obtain um, you know, tobacco products is really what the focus of this is. It really isn't uh, focused on creating additional challenges for adults to make their own to make their own choices. Um, and again, I'm 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 will I'm I'm interested in feedback on that. Um, another component of this is is not allowing any coupons or discounts. Again, if the purpose is to establish a minimum pack size and minimum price, utilizing discounts uh, kind of uh, it, it doesn't uh, establish an appropriate threshold uh, and it allows too many loopholes in and around that. Um, when we talked with the team, with the group of retailers last night, that didn't seem to be an issue that everyone seemed to agree that no one does uh, coupons or discounts. So I hope similar, uh, we get similar feedback this evening that um, that's not uh, a substantial issue uh, for us in this particular, uh, this particular proposed ordinance. Uh, and then the last one, um, which was the, the, the lion's share of our dialogue yesterday and why I left it last year, uh, is the concept of prohibiting the sale of electronic smoking devices. Um, the current draft proposal prohibits the sale of all electronic smoking devices. Uh, there are no carve-outs uh, for different product types, um, but there definitely was interest from uh, the group yesterday in having the city uh, at least evaluate whether or not certain carve-outs uh, could be incorporated. So um, with that, uh, I wanted to just go through all of those very quickly. Now I want to take each of those one at a time and get feedback from the retailers that are online. So if we could start with really looking at um, the concept of the licensing and the potential transfers, I'd be interested to hear what concerns you have about uh, your business, uh, your ability to sell your business in the future should you want to, whether or not this is a, um, a, a significant concern or, um, or if it seems like we've at least tried to address to the best of our ability your concerns.
Okay, at this point, if uh, any of our attendees have any questions, you're welcome to raise your Zoom hand um, to um, solicit a response. And uh, Jason, I see no hands raised. Okay. So then the next question uh, relates to the establishment of a buffer zone around youth oriented areas. And what that is, as I mentioned before, it is, it's every K through 12 school, uh, and it's uh, both public and private, as well as every city owned um, recreation facility, whether it's a park or a um, community center uh, or a ball field. Uh, and so 600 feet uh, from the boundary of each of those facilities, would pro we would not allow new licenses to be established within that buffer zone. Um, I'm interested in your feedback as to whether or not uh, there are great concerns with that. Um, it seems consistent with many of the other agencies around us, but, uh, but I really would like to hear um, thoughts. Again, if you would like to ask a question, please raise your, your hand in Zoom. And again, Jason, I see no hands raised at this time. Uh, I'm going to take the next two together, which is the flavored products. Um, right now, it is a statewide ban. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm interested to hear if there are any specific areas that uh, you believe are outside the, the statewide uh, ordinance that we should uh, consider still. Um, and then the other is the minimum pack and price. Uh, minimum pack size being uh, five uh, little cigars in a pack um, in order to more or less create a $10 minimum um, for that particular purchase uh, or a minimum price for a package of 20 cigarettes at $10. And again, Jason, I see no hands raised at this time. Uh, the next relates to the coupons and discounts. Um, I, I'm not aware of those occurring based on the feedback that I received last night. But again, I'm interested in the feedback that you have this evening, uh, if discounts or coupons should be incorporated uh, or if I should consider uh, a different approach. And again, I see no raise, no hands raised at this time. Okay. So then the last piece relates to the electronic smoking devices. And, and as I mentioned, that was uh, probably the, the most significant discussion uh, yesterday afternoon. Um, the conversation, well, the, the proposal at this point, as I mentioned earlier, is the prohibition of all electronic smoking devices that are, uh, um, that are tobacco, uh, or nicotine delivery uh, devices, um, and uh, it would it would not have carve outs for uh, for other devices uh, at this point. Um, I know other jurisdictions have some different language. Uh, they are not um, they are not necessarily Sonoma County jurisdictions, um, but uh, I'm interested in hearing uh, your thoughts your feedback uh, and any suggestions or recommendations you might have relating to what we're currently proposing as, as a full prohibition of uh, selling electronic smoking devices. And I see no hands raised. Uh, just along that line, uh, part of the presentation tomorrow will talk about um, we'll talk about and I will raise uh, feedback that I heard from both of these meetings. Um, I will do my best to address comments that I heard yesterday uh, um, since there, since I, I haven't heard comments tonight. Um, and uh, we will uh, do our best to have uh, a balanced dialogue with Council as far as the presentation goes. Um, to, uh, I'm sorry, not tomorrow, on uh, May 21st, uh, next Tuesday. Uh, this, is, this will be a public hearing. 
Um, the earliest the item will be heard uh, is at 5 p.m. Um, they will provide an opportunity for the public to make comments and to provide feedback. Um, as I mentioned to the, to the group yesterday, uh, I believe along this particular line, this is a council that would really like to hear feedback from the retailers. Uh, I think they would like to understand, um, regardless of what our uh, adjacent agencies may have uh, put in place, they would like to understand how this is going to impact retailers within the city. Uh, and especially if there are uh, recommendations that would um, lessen the impacts, but allow us to continue to work toward the primary purpose of youth avoidance uh, youth access and youth use. Um, if there are any last minute thoughts or questions, uh, I, I don't want to um, leave early if there are things that you'd like to pass along. Um, I'd love to be able to answer any questions you might have. And I see no hands raised. Okay, uh, the last piece I'll, I'll mention is um, we do not allow Zoom comments in the council meeting. All comments have to be either uh, sent electronically um, via email uh, or via hard copy uh, to um, the city council members, uh, or you can come in person and make a comment uh, during the public hearing. Um, Yes, Therese. Well, I just do we want to remind the attendees how they come off mute or how they raise their hand, I think is what it is. I can't remember, star something, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I can do so. So um, if you if you would like to make a uh, comment uh, and you're calling by telephone, you could dial star nine to raise your hand. Um, or uh, if you are attending right now uh, in your in your uh, box next to your name, there's a function that will permit you to raise your hand. So if you would like to raise your hand, make a comment, of course, I will uh, call upon you and unmute your microphone so that you could ask your question. So if anyone has any comments, uh, now would be the time to do so. And the way our see, city, yeah. the way our city council public hearings work is, we will provide the council with a first reading of this ordinance. Council will hear feedback from the public. They will provide specific direction to city staff relating to the adoption, uh, alteration, or denial of the ordinance. Um, if the Council chooses to accept the ordinance or accept the ordinance with minor revisions. We will come back to Council at a meeting within four weeks um, for a second read of the ordinance. Uh, and at the end of the second read is when that ordinance would be adopted. Um, it's our intention for the, the ordinance to be um, once adopted, that it would go into effect January 1st, 2025. Uh, and the idea behind that was to provide retailers an opportunity to uh, sell, remove, um, or um, you know, get rid of uh, products that would be prohibited on, uh, uh, under the ordinance. Uh, it would also provide us time to create and establish um, a uh, process for obtaining the license and license fees. And uh, I do see a question. Go okay. ahead. Uh, yes, uh, it is. Um, our, our person that would like to make a comment is uh, Soleil. Soleil, I'm going to unmute your microphone so that you can speak. So at this point, you should be able to uh, ask your question. You'll, you'll need to unmute them. Okay, again, I, I, I can see your hand up. Uh, the last name is H-O-M-I-S-A-N, Homison. 
And um, again, if you unmute, you'll be able to ask your, your question or make your comment. Appears to be some some difficulties on on the other end, so I'm not sure how to proceed. Um, Saleh, just when uh, if you if you are able to unmute, um, please feel free to go ahead. Even uh, if I'm speaking, um, so I also want to provide you with my contact information if you have questions that you want to ask, but you want to ask them offline. Um, my phone number is 707-543-3810. Uh, my email address is jnutt -T at s-r-c-i-t-y dot org. And uh, I'm happy to um, provide uh, any additional information if you'd like to speak offline. Um, I'd, I'd like to also ask uh, Steve or Anna if you could provide information about how um, retailers can provide written comments uh, to city council uh, or to staff through the general public lines, uh, if you could um, unmute and provide that information, that would be helpful. Uh, Anna, would you like to, to answer that or? If you can answer, that would be great. Hey, um, this is Lon Peterson. Thanks. I'll chime in here real quick. Um, so uh, all of our public meetings that have agendas, the very top of the agenda for the next meeting, which is May 21st, uh, it has all the um, instructions as to how to collaborate with the meeting, whether it's being Zoom or in person. Um, if you choose to send an email to the city council, you can send that to cc-comment at srcity.org. Um, that'll be by 5 p.m. Um, the Monday before the city council meeting. Um, and or, as mentioned, uh, you could contact um, Jason Nutt's self, uh, mo or, uh, desk phone um, for uh, communication before the meeting. Can I, um, can that information that Jason provided be put in the chat? Might be helpful. And um, uh, let me see, oh, he he's not there anymore, but I was gonna say, if you press the space bar on your keyboard, you can unmute yourself. You have to keep it pressed. That's an easy way to unmute if, um, if you wanna speak. So Saleh, I saw that you were uh, able to rejoin us. Um, do you want to try asking your question? Same problem. Uh, hello? Yes, thank you. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, my name is Saleh Hamasan. I actually am one of the one of the owners for the tobacco retails in Santa Rosa. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we we sell devices like what you're talking about and the uh, swishers and the like uh, cigars. They come loose. Yeah. And we are we already affected by the the new law from the state, the ban for the flavor ban. And I want. I'm not sure how can we continue to do business after this, you know, the proposal from the city, if we went through. Uh, my rent is almost over, almost about $7,000, and my electric is $1,000, my employees is almost $7,000. And uh, I'm not sure how can we, 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 you know, we continue to make it, to make a living of this kind of business. I, uh, I invest in the business over $300,000 about two years ago. And now with this new laws, I'm like, I'm not sure. I don't know what to do. 
I, I appreciate that, uh, Saleh, I, I, and I, 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 we heard similar feedback yesterday as well. Um, I, I think if there are particular areas, at rec recognizing that um, this type of licensing structure and the, the type of um, sales restrictions uh, are, are likely to move forward in one form or another. Are there particular areas that, uh, that you have the greatest concerns on? So one of the comments yesterday was about FDA authorized e-cigarettes uh, or, or electronic smoking devices. Okay. Hello? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I have another question, if you don't mind. Please. Give me the time. Yeah. Uh, for the electronic devices, I mean the devices or any disposable devices, even the tobacco flavor, which is allowed by the state to sell? So, so the proposal at this point is to is to prohibit the sale of all uh, all devices, including those that are authorized by the FDA. Okay, even the the tobacco disposable uh, devices, the disposable yes. one. Yes, the single use oh, okay. as well as the refillable. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's all the concern I have. Is there is there a particular um, approach that we could consider other than, uh, for example, uh, only banning uh, or only prohibiting the sale of single use versus the other? Or again, I'm I'm trying to see what I'm trying to see if there's any area where it's less it's less of a stress or less of a struggle. I appreciate the feedback. Um, anyone else wanting to make comments or or express thoughts? At this point, I don't see any of the hands raised, Jason. So, uh, Anna, to your point, I don't see uh, an opportunity to provide uh, details in the chat box. Thank you. Um, is there information on one of the slides, Jason? That's an excellent point. I can make that very quick. Give me just a moment. Jason, are you looking to share the instructions for the next city council meeting on the 21st? No, I was just going to do a really quick screen share. Okay. So folks can see um, the highlighted line is my information. Um, if you have additional questions you'd like to talk with me about uh, after this uh, or um, prior to Tuesday, um, please feel free to call me. Again, my name is Jason Nutt. My phone number at my desk is 543-3810. And my email address is JNUTT at srcity dot org. I'm sorry, I didn't have a, uh, the ability to put that in the chat, um, but hopefully that's uh, 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 information that you can use to uh, ask additional questions that you have. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And with that, if there are no final questions, I want to say thank you very much uh, to uh, those of you retailers who showed up this, this evening. Uh, I really do appreciate. Um, I am, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm trying to take a, a very balanced approach to this, uh, to this ordinance discussion before council. Uh, and I hope that we see or hear from you uh, on Tuesday evening. Um, and again, I look forward to working with you through this process. And thank you again. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you, county and city staff, for participating uh, tonight. Uh, and we will go ahead uh, and say good evening.